Uh, good morning guys, um, welcome to another early day real tourist hours here in Barcelona. Um, so the plan for today is we're just gonna get some breakfast first, we're gonna get some churros potentially, then go to Park Güell later in a few hours, then have some lunch, hopefully in a really nice Catalan restaurant, then finally end our day at La Sagrada Familia. I am so excited. So hopefully we're in for some beautiful sights and even tastier food. So let's go. It was free as well. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. Um, so we stopped over at Churreria. Um, it's in the Gothic Quarter, and the owners were so nice. They even gave us a free tote bag. How nice of them. And they gave us like free samples and stuff. We had a really nice conversation with the owner. So we just got some churros and some little treats. Very excited. So these are fresh from the fryer. They coated it in a bit of sugar as well. I'm gonna dip it in some chocolate. Ooh, very thick. <laughs> mm. Very nice. Because the churro and the chocolate is not too sweet. The sugar does make it more dessert-like, but I still really like it. Mm, very good, very crunchy, very light and fluffy. Good way to start the day. So we got this empanada-looking pastry. It's filled with pumpkin. I'm assuming it's pumpkin jam. Have a taste. Oh. Yeah, so it is filled with like pumpkin jam. There's a lot of pastry, so if you take a big bite, it can feel a bit dry, but other than that, it's quite nice, it's quite sweet. A good snack to have. But yeah, I really like it. Oh, I got my hands a bit messy there, but you know, that's what it's all about. You gotta get a bit dirty to get the best food you can in Barcelona. Let's go. Now, before taking the subway to Park Güell, we made sure to purchase a tea casual ticket from one of the machines. It's valid for 10 rides and it's pretty good value to use all the rides up. Our journey from Liceu to Lesep station took us only 8 minutes. If you're a tourist, getting familiar with the extensive Barcelona metro system is a must, making seeing your favorite sights so much easier. So we got off the subway at um, Lesep station and we actually got off at the wrong station. We, we overshot it by one just because we didn't know how to open the doors so we kind of got stuck and no one went in or out of the subway. So now we're just walking uphill to Park Güell. Should be very exciting. Uh, Barcelona has been pretty flat so far so this is a pretty big uphill but luckily as you can see the stairs has escalators. Wow! Skinny legend stairs. Skinny. Goodbye. Wow. Oh, she's given up, friends. She's Just given up. My back hurts. <laughs> Shut up. Wow, Instagram model. Do you have boyfriends? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a catch. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello friends, we are here at Parkwell. Um, this is another one of Antony Gaudi's magnificent attractions here in Barcelona. This actually started off as a housing project in the early 1900s. Um, it was commissioned by uh, Eusebi Gaudi, um, as, uh, no, no, not Eusebi Gaudi, Eusebi Guel, which is where Park Guel comes from. But then around the 1920s, it, uh, they found out it wasn't going to be commercially viable, so they just donated it to the Barcelona City Council. So now it's just a very, very popular church attraction. There's so many people here, um, they're doing some renovation at the moment, but that's fine. You gotta do what you do to preserve the heritage. But yeah, it's a very beautiful park, and we're just gonna have a look around. 
Now, as you walk through Park Guel, it's hard to imagine that this former housing project isn't some surrealist, Pablo Picasso monumentalist daydream. From the intricate mosaics to the uniquely designed houses and sculptures, Park Guel is truly an architect's wet dream and an engineer's worst nightmare. Also, make sure to catch the view from the terrace of the Doric Temple. It's definitely one of the best in Barcelona, offering sweeping views of the city below. So after your visit to Park Guell, you can also visit the outer park, which is, I'm pretty sure it's completely free of charge. So you've got the, out, the main park with all the main attractions, but there's also the outer park, which is still pretty cool to see. It's still got some works of Antony Gaudi scattered around. It's very serene and peaceful. A lot of greenery, a lot of trees. It's very cooling here, very peaceful. Um, I think the house that he lived in as well and he designed himself is also situated here. So this park is also still worth a look. So walking in the Gracia neighborhood on the way to lunch, a much more quiet, peaceful neighborhood away from all the tourists. It is off the beaten path. So we're just gonna walk to lunch now, going to Restaurant Calbotera. So here we are at Restaurant Calbotera in the Gracia neighborhood. This was on my list of the must eats in Barcelona. I'm pretty excited. So we just got um, their menu del dia. We got three sets. So it's like a daily special menu that they have. And you get to order uh, an appetizer, a main uh, dessert, and you get the drink as well. So it's pretty good value. And we also got a, a capipota, which is a very traditional dish in Catalonia. Very excited. Let's eat. So I'm gonna first taste the... Uh, so it's called pastis de escalivada. I think it's like a fish cake -y. Thing. Um, there's like red pepper as well and some salad. Mm. Mm. Super smooth and creamy. It's, like, it's not that fishy, which I really like. It's almost like cream cheesy in a way. Oh, that's really refreshing. Oh, it does have cheese. It has a cheesiness. <laughs> so good. And the roasted red pepper. Mm. Oh, that's so sweet. So sweet and refreshing, really nice. Like slightly smoky as well. Maybe probably like infused with like roasted red pepper or something. That's like a really, really refreshing dish. Next one is some. Um, it's called quesos a la marinera. It's like peas in a in a dark black soup with some cuttlefish. Ooh. Ooh, that's really nice. Oh. It's like the the soup is slightly seafoody, but in the in the best way possible. And like the peas, oh, really nice, really soft. Like the skin has a nice texture as well, where it just bursts in your mouth when you eat into it. And I'll try it with a cuttlefish as well. Oh yeah, makes it even better. That cuttlefish is perfectly cooked. Really good flavor. Don't let the looks of this dish fool you. It's absolutely delicious. You know, as a tradition, always go to mop up your sauce with your bread. Magic. So next dish is some canelons. Excuse my Catalan. It's called canelons gratinats. So it's cannelloni. I'm not sure what it's filled with, but let's have a taste. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that kind of cannelloni just melts in your mouth. Oh, that, that whatever, I think it's probably pork, but the filling is so beautiful. It's so heartwarming, so rustic. Oh, like the cannelloni is also like a really nice texture and mixed with the cheese on top. Oh, perfect combo. Mm. Oh. Oh yeah, I love tripe. Mm. Also has like some beef pieces in it as well, as well as some peppers. Mm. Very nice, gelatinous and yet tender. The sauce has, a, has the slightest kick as well. Very good. 
I love it. We also got some steak. It's like this year plain grilled steak, um, lightly seasoned with some French fries. Oh, Ooh. it's actually really tasty. Like, I thought it was going to be a bit plain at first, but it's expertly seasoned. And it has a nice chew to it and a very intense beefy flavor. A very nice flap of beef right here. Oh, yeah. Super beefy. Super beefy. Uh, a little bit of a break for, from tradition here. I literally just like, since we don't have bread right now, I just dip the french fries in the cayo sauce. It's pretty good. Can't complain. So another dish that we got is some rabbit in a mustard sauce. Ooh, sounds very interesting. Mustardy. Ooh. Let's taste. Mmm. Like it's a mustard sauce, but the mustard flavor itself is not that intense. Like it's got like a complex sweet and savory combo to it. Oh, and the wrap is pretty tender and very flavorful. It's a good dish. You got you gotta get the bones. You gotta get the meat out of the bone. Oh, yeah. Next dish is some fried fish. It's pretty simple. I think it's just fried. I'm not really sure what fish it is. But it had like a pretty interesting uh, tongue and cheek. Uh, I mean, shall I say, um, tail and mouth presentation. It's literally like biting its own tail. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, it's like very light, um, flaky yet melted in your mouth. So it's a pretty simple fish, but it's like pretty pleasant. Or fish. The skin also has like a light batter, which really adds to like the fried goodness of the fish. We poke holes in it. Next up is their chocolate cake. Well, it's like a plain cake um, covered with chocolate, and it's got some orange cream as well. So let's taste it. Mm. Very good flavor. The orange flavor is pretty perfect. Nice texture and cake. And like the chocolate is like a good balance to the orange flavor. Another dessert that we got was this delectable mel y mato. It's a simple combo of fresh cow's cheese drizzled with honey. It's got an almost cottage cheesy texture and the flavor is light and sweet. A very, very nice dessert. Uh, so, so next up is their almond cake. And I, I heard it's pretty traditional around here to drizzle a little bit of port wine on the cake. Let's taste it. Oh yeah. It's pretty good. Ooh, it's like an unexpected combination. Like you got the the alcoholic, like tarty flavor of the wine mixed with the almost almond liqueur flavor of the almond cake. It's a pretty like unexpected but really good combo. So I got another piece and I added even more wine this time. So oh, yeah. mm. I may not be one for drinks, but this and the cake takes a cake. I, I, I can't live with this life. I forgot to press record <laughs> film the almond cake thing. So I was doing that part with the orange cake. <laughs> I was like <laughs> trying to recreate my reaction when I was eating the cake because it wasn't recording. <laughs> Epic traditional Catalan meal here at Calbuter. What a lovely spot! What a lovely rustic local spot here in the Gracia neighborhood. I thoroughly enjoyed that meal. Now, I think we're just gonna walk around first before we head to La Sagrada Familia. Let's go. Nothing in the world compares to the Sagrada Familia. As I write this, I struggle to put in words what I experienced seeing it for the first time. And like myself, it will be what many of you will experience the first time you see it. Pure, unadulterated awe. 
I was utterly overwhelmed at the sheer amount of detail and ornamentation carved into its mythical facade, and as I finally walked into the church itself, my jaws couldn't help but drop as I was greeted by the forest of pillars and stained glass. This earthly monument to the heavens is so magnificent, so painstakingly beautiful, that it would make any non-believer feel God's presence. As we visited close to the evening, the sun set on the western facade, illuminating the warm rainbow of colors on its stained glass windows. I have truly entered a real-life fantasy. And to chase that sunlight, we decided to buy tickets to climb the Nativity Tower to catch an incredible view of the city and the church. Um, so we just visited the top of the Nativity Tower and it's pretty good. Like you have a very good view of Barcelona and you get to see the, some of the construction up close. I'm trying, I'm trying to catch my breath right now and trying to talk properly because um, you do take the lift upstairs but once you go down, you have to take 400 steps all the way down. But you are treated with some pretty nice views like here. And although it may be a bit tiring it is, it's pretty worth it um, you know Sagrada every nook and cranny is pretty aesthetic and also remember Sagrada Familia in all its splendor is unfinished it is scheduled to be completed in 2026 the centenary of Antony Gaudi's death and just like the 2019 NBA season it may be one of the greatest unfinished things in history Sagrada Familia is Antony Gaudi's magnum opus and a truly life-changing experience that should be in everyone's bucket list in El Born, um, but it's like a pretty charming tapas bar, but they also have a pretty big um, seating area out back, which is where we are, and we just got a couple of typical Catalan tapas to dig into. I cannot wait. So we'll start with the Iberian ham croquettes. That is super creamy, like you can't even tell that's potatoes. Like the little ham pieces in there, super beautiful. And that, that coating is really light and crispy. Next up is their Atomic Bravas. Not really sure what's in it, but let's find out. Oh yeah. Mm, that meaty inside and the spicy, spicy sauce. Oh, really good. I see why they call it Atomic Bombas for a reason. It has a bit of a spicy kick, but it's a perfect level of heat. Next up is their anchovies in white vinegar. It looks super simple, but Let's try it out. Oh yeah. Mm. Acidic. That fish is very melty in your mouth. It's super simple, but it's super delicious. It comes with some olives as well, so we'll have it with that. Ooh. That's a briny explosion right there, but I love it. Mm. Next up is their, I think it's their grilled squid. It's grilled in its own ink with some alioli sauce. Mm. That's good. It's perfectly cooked and that aioli is so garlic and creamy. Such an interesting move as well, cooking in it in its own ink. It's a very nice uh, visual effect. You know, can't, can't really go wrong with squid, can you? Especially with alioli sauce. It's pure magic. So we also got a calzots omelette. So basically what calzots is, is they're like a spring onion-y type vegetable that's in season around this time. It's with a romescu sauce, which is also uh, typical of the Catalonian reason. Uh, I really wanted like just the grilled whole ones, but this will do for now. So let's just taste it. Mm, that's not bad. It's very eggy, it's got that vegetal flavor from the calzots. Yeah, it does have a bit of a spring onion-y vibe. It's pretty good. I like it. And that remesu sauce, like adds the like the perfect amount of like excitingness to the dish. Very nice. 
so these are their patatas bravas. It's a bit of a redemption from yesterday's patatas bravas. This is like the ideal that I was looking for, like thick cut wedges of chips with alioli and that spicy tomato sauce. Let's dig in. Redemption has been has succeeded. How do you say that? First served. And redemption has been served. No, that's that's no, that's revenge has been served. But no, I think these bravas have redeemed yesterday's bravas. These are so nice. They're expertly fried. The, aio, the alioli mixed with that spicy tomato sauce is the perfect balance with each other. You got the spicy, spicy heat from the tomatoes, the, the, the tomato sauce, and that. You know the fattiness from the alioli sauce. Yeah. It's just a, oh, such a wonderful combination. These are my ideal patatas bravas. Oh. There it is. Okay. I'm happy. I can finally leave Barcelona in peace. I've had the patatas bravas that I've been dreaming of. Finally, as is always, this sacred tradition around here. Life is complete. Mm. You know, I tell you how I felt about this meal, but I think I'm just gonna reflect on it and just let it in for, for a few minutes. I'll get back to you in a few. I uh, forgot to do the outro again yesterday just because we were so tired but what a fun-filled packed day it was yesterday um, we started at Churreria de Manuel I mean if you start off your day with some churros and chocolate you know like you've already done your day right and that was just amazing we're definitely gonna be back then we went to Park Well, another Antony Gaudi masterpiece. A very unique experience. It is packed full of tourists, but you know, I mean, if you're in a city as beautiful as Barcelona, you can't really avoid that. We also headed to Restaurant Cal Boter. What a really nice um, traditional Catalan restaurant. The service was so friendly. Shout out to the waitress who served us. She even complimented that she really liked my camera, even though I really get self-conscious about people noticing my vlogging camera. But she was so nice and the food was so delicious. Then after that, we went to the amazing, the beautiful, the incredible, the breathtaking, every superlative that you can ask for, La Sagrada Familia. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life before. That's not even, that's not even an exaggeration. Like, we spent a good two and a half hours there. We also went up to the tower, which was really nice, but oh my goodness. You could spend, I could spend a whole day there, to be honest. Oh, then finally, redemption at Bodega La Puntual. What a really nice atmosphere at a really local bar. Oh, incredible tapas and the patatas bravas. Definitely the highlight of my day. That was just deep fried, fatty, spicy goodness. Everything else was good as well. The croquettes, the bomba, the sardines and everything else amazing anyway guys that'll do for today's vlog um, i hope you guys enjoyed sticking around with us with our adventures but yeah um thank you guys for watching and uh see you guys on the next one so yambi today here in sagrada familia we are reminded about one thing beauty may be fleeting but the way that sagrada familia has made you feel lasts forever doesn't it yes uh, I literally just went out, I literally just went back inside to just like soak it in because I may never see something as beautiful as that again. But I'm here.